Winter day, hello. Oh yeah. All right, let's do some painting. Good day, good day, Chief sir. Hello, Prince Daisuke. Good day to you. Hi, Kyo. Flame Dex. Hello. How are you? Lots of art challenge entries? Awesome. I'll look at them later. What was the topic this time? Sean, what's up? How you doing? Legendary creatures. Awesome. Isby Van, hello. No Zen today, oh no. That's no good. <laughs> Anthony, good day. Hey everybody. Hope you're all having a wonderful day, morning, evening. Zen's allowed to take a break once in a while. Today I would do uh, just a good old-fashioned landscape. It's been a while since I've just done a landscape on stream. It's usually, uh, if it's a landscape, it's virtual plain air or something. Working with references? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, I've got some just like desert mountains that I'm looking at right now. I 
Um, I'm making up my own thing, my own composition. I'm just uh, just seeing the different shapes of the mountains. That's all. Just this stuff. Pretty basic. Nothing special. I just like the, uh, some of the color information and the mood and atmosphere. So this time it's going to be a pretty quiet stream because Zen is not here. Usually she's heckling me the whole time. Need to find a heckler to, to take her place. Demi Dot, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Are you going for a European castle aesthetic or a desert mesa, abandoned city? Probably the latter, but we'll see. Never really know exactly what's going to come up. She's not here, but she's here. Contacting us from beyond.
Jorik, hello! It's 6 a.m. there in Spain. Wow, nice and early. Thanks for joining. Just what to do about values when the lighting makes the foreground light. You can have a light foreground. There are other ways to draw attention to a focal point other than other than just value. Adam Harris, hello. That's not fair. Zen can't ask questions if she's not here. You can't you can't do that. You gotta be here. Zeb, hello. Welcome. Good to have you back. Kyle, what's up, man? things to figure out here. Just focusing on the light. keep wanting to paint when you get off work? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm always... No, I was always kind of like that. <laughs> it's not like I wanted to do more homework, but if the homework was do a painting of whatever you want, then sure, yeah, no, I'm going to do more homework. 
I always enjoy doing personal work. Just like messing around. Trying different things. Experimenting. I think like it's especially important when you're working professionally to do it. Because then it could just turn into a job. It could feel just like a job and I don't want it to. Plus the stuff I'm doing here is like just sketches. It's nothing too serious. It's just for fun. Yeah, you kind of have to love the process, even when it doesn't work out in your favor. You actually should probably love it even more then because then that means you learn you should have learned something in the process you know your failures are your best friend in that in that instance right because you don't fail then you're not learning so Getting older means you're more mature and focused? I think so. I think that's just a little bit of that. Yeah, maturing as a human being, maturing, maturing as an artist, totally. Hey, Z oh wow, Zen is here. This thing is on, totally. Are you having a hard time connecting over there? You're at the grocery store? <laughs> you are dedicated. You don't have to you don't have to join in. That's crazy. How do you know what's going on? Oh, you're in Hawaii? Oh, that's awesome. How is Hawaii internet? Is it very good or is it...
kind of not so good. I wonder. I wonder the quality of the internet over there. Um, I want to know because uh, when I make the big move to Hawaii, I'll know what I'm in for. Spam Matsubi? Ugh, sounds gross. What's up with Hawaii and spam? I never understood that. Will this stream be uploaded? Yeah, it will be on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. It always goes up there. Probably like the <laughs> Australian Vegemite thing. I've never had Vegemite. Is that similar to like a ca calorie mate in Japan? It's just like canned foods and processed food that just stayed around after the war and just became a thing because people started incorporating into their traditional cuisine. That's true. The, that canned meat does last a long time, though. Can't deny that.
All right, I think this design is going somewhere. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Got to figure out something clever to do. I'm trying to. I'm thinking about too many things at once. I need to simplify the process. I'm trying to think about like what the story is already. And I kind of need to focus on other things. Early on, I just want to get a good design in good foundation for the rest of the painting uh, and not, not think about too many of the smaller details right now but I can't help it I'm like oh I want to think about what's going on what's happening but I can't do that not yet Cool building shapes. Thanks. Slightly off topic. Uh, if you had music custom arranged for your channel stream, what kind of, would you rather steer towards? Uh, Ori, Tron, what's playing now? What's playing now is like, I think it's the Assassin's Creed. Uh, Jesper Kid soundtrack. I'm a big Jesper Kid fan. He's very good. Um, if I, I think, I think if there was any one type of music, I would probably get bored of it over time. Uh, it does seem like Ori is the soundtrack that keeps coming up, either by choice or just because I'm, since I'm playing it off YouTube, YouTube just decides, hey, like, you like this, let's listen to it again. Um, so I guess Ori would be my answer for that. But like I said, any one thing could get boring over time. You know, if I have to listen to it over and over again. But I could be all right with Ori <laughs> over and over again. It's such a great soundtrack. And there are other great ones, but it's just like I don't think of them because I'm I'm not thinking about the music when I start the stream. I just go, oh, I should probably play something. <laughs> and then that's usually what comes up. If I played like music that I really want to listen to, I would probably get all kinds of copyright emails and stuff, so. Oops. Let's get some bulbous clouds in there just blocked in. Thought it was a factory, you know? I was thinking of something at first that could be factory-ish or something modern-ish and then it, it got uh, destroyed and then repurposed. Humanity rebuilt, you know, that sort of story. I still might. So instead of answering the question, I'm like keeping it ambiguous and just moving on. Because I'm like, I want to get to color. I don't want to get to the fun stuff and not figure shit out. But you got to figure shit out first. Despite anything I say, you got to make sure it works first. Whoa. 
then I thought about statues, and then I'm, now I'm just flailing around a few ideas. Alright, I think as a design, it's alright. So I want to... Let's HDFI it first. HD. Let's give it some HD. Put it in HD, high definition. You know, like like a wide angle film. widescreen yes maybe that's a better way to say it why let's let's turn it to widescreen remember when uh, HD and widescreen first came out and they had some DVDs that would say full screen or widescreen we thought like, oh, I'd rather have the full screen. Why would I? Why would I want something chopped off? I want full screen because it fills the screen. It's a bigger, bigger image. It means better, right? And then we all learned together that everything should be widescreen, even our artwork. HD is so 90s. What? Come on, people were bragging about HD like starting eight years ago probably it's still a new thing it's 4k now i know i realize this i'm not that old I'm actually not that old at all <laughs> all right let's let's uh start blocking the color there's a couple of references that i like for the color end of things. But I want to make sure that's what I want. Hmm. Let's see, what do I want? What do I want? Gotta use my brain, guys. I don't do it that often, but. I gotta do it now. Let's separate the cloud here. Okay. And we'll lock some things up. go to let's make a little snapshot there for process and start painting in some color you see three giant stick mans you know, I want them to be uh, stick man deities like giant statues
Jeremy, does local value get confusing when you have atmospheric perspective too? Yeah. Um, as things recede back into space, they kind of lose their local color and they take on the color of the atmosphere. Like if you have a, a bright red building really, really far away, it's gonna it's not gonna be nearly as bright red as, as if it was um, if it was close to you. It'll appear uh, much more desaturated. Wickerman Stickman. Exactly. But they're not going to burn the Wicker Man. They, they, the Stick Men like Wicker Man because they praise it. It's their gods. What if your foreground is lit up? Then it's lit up. The thing is, is like, if you add light on something, that means you're drawing attention to it. So, if I were to suddenly put a light source in my foreground, lightening up the foreground like this, it's taking attention away from here. But there are other ways to create a focal point and to draw attention other than just value. I could have this be here, but, you know, not draw too much attention to itself because there's not much detail, but then keep all of my detail on the actual focal point, and it won't be a much of a problem. Um, but the thing is, it's like, if you're trying to showcase something in, a, in an environment, um, you're going to put a light on it. And by putting a light on something that's at the bottom of the image, or something that's not central, or at a focal point, that kind of goes against, I don't know, uh, clear image making. And then it becomes kind of confusing to your audience. <laughs> uh, I would dull the light down quite a bit if it's lit, or, you know, there's, there's other things you could do to kind of not draw too much attention to it, and to draw attention to the area that you want to draw attention to, like your focal point. Hello, Ukusif. Jamor and Blackguard. Hello. these mountains over here, the, the very distant mountains.
Is High Moon located in LA? I am, no, this is um, North County, San Diego. So we're kind of like in between LA and San Diego. And Carlsbad. Any update on your print site? N no. No update, sorry. I've been like crazy super busy lately. <laughs> it sucks. It's good, it's gonna be good, but it just sucks. I, I do wanna set up a store in the next like month or two. I'm really gonna do it. I just, uh, just haven't quite gotten around to it. We've been to Carlsbad Caverns. Carlsbad Caverns is in New Mexico. And no, I have not been there. Guyami. Hello, just arrived here. Did I use custom shapes to block out re or regular brushes or both? I used regular brushes. Regular ass brushes. Nothing fancy. I haven't done any fancy tricks. I do very little fancy tricks on stream. Except for my, my birds that I will occasionally put in there. My custom shaped birds. Just because who wants to sit here and paint out little birds in a scene? You know? And some spicy colors in here. Extra spicy. <laughs> All right. Got to move on. Are you going to CTN? Yes, I will be at CTN. My wife and I, we have a shared table. We've been doing that like five years now. We will be there. We might do other events, but one thing is for sure, we're definitely gonna be at CTN. And I'm not doing any demos or any of that this time, so I'm actually pretty glad. <laughs> because it's going to be a pretty relaxing time there. You've been to Cosmic Caverns? Is it cool? Yes, I just copy paste. Done. Paint hacks.
it somehow feels like watercolor. That's interesting. They have like a lighter sand. But everything's going to look a little weird until I get all the different colors blocked in, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time with each with each layer of color here Yeah, the, the brush that I'm using is kind of, it's similar to a pastel or a chalk kind of texture. is certainly warm but it has a warm local color but as it recedes back it shifts cooler so I'm trying to find that that balance between the the warm and the cool And if it's a lighter sand, that's going to definitely reflect the sky color. Yeah, the, the caverns are cool. There's a tornado of bats in the evening. Damn, it sounds serious. I definitely would like to see that. The tornado of bats. One tip you can give an artist starting out uh, digitally from traditional. Uh, about six six months going on seven for digital, but taking online courses. I think taking online courses is a good idea. There's a lot of good options for you out there to learn. Um, I think uh, w what benefit you get from painting traditionally, um, it, it's it's both a blessing and a curse is that you're kind of limited. You're very, very limited on what you can do. If you're painting in watercolor, you know, you really have to think about each step. You got to plan things out. You have to, you got to use your brain. <laughs> Digital painting, you can kind of just go for it because it's so forgiving. Um, what I would do is, is if you're painting or painting digitally, try to find a way to limit yourself in some way. 
I think that usually helps, especially if you're coming from a traditional background. You know, it might be a little, it's sometimes a little overwhelming, all the, all the options and all the different ways you can paint. But per image, I would say, I'm, you know what, I'm just only going to focus on this thing, this one thing. So I'm really focus on the, uh, you know, the shadows or the, the patterns of light and dark. I'm only going to paint black and white. I'm only going to use this palette. I'm only going to use this brush. Try to set up uh, certain limitations for yourself. I think I think that'll help. Lighter sand or high reflective sand? Well, if the sand is lighter, it will reflect the sky. subtle application of um, of color so far I really haven't uh, gone off the deep end quite yet plenty of time still to go off the deep end Planning, the one thing we all need so we can work fast. That's true. And and you're right, you're not gonna get that without a lot of experience, so you gotta, you gotta paint as much as you can. <laughs> Never stop painting. You know, I could sit here and tell you guys all the advice and all the things that I know, but you really kind of just don't understand or you don't really know until you spend the hours and the years practicing and doing it. I mean, that's sort of the, the secret, right? It's just spending lots of lots of hours, lots of time. People these days, they don't want to work for it, right? They just want to give it to them or something. So. But you guys, you gotta work for it. I pretty much have no life, so... <laughs> uh, that's all I do. This is it. There's literally, literally nothing else I can do in life except for this, so... I was telling my, 
coworkers today, I, was, I feel like, you know, like grandparents and great grandparents and people that lived, you know, you know, like old folks. They always seem to live like more exciting lives. Like people just generally live more exciting lives. Like way back in the day, you know, they had multiple careers. They just would hitchhike and travel and get in all these crazy situations. And, and, that, and today it's like, oh man, I just like, I went to college, I started working, and then I just, I'm still working. That's it. I mean, I travel here and there, but I don't have like crazy adventures. Yeah, there's no painting pill, man. Sorry. It's because they didn't have the internet. <laughs> they didn't have video games. That's the thing. Like, I was also talking to them because, like, uh, some of the guys are a little older than me. Um, Jamaran, thank you so much for the follow. Some of the guys are older than me, and they they went to high school like in the early '90s and '80s, and uh, and, and like. They were talking about, like, bullies and stuff, like, doing, like, crazy shit that I thought only exists in movies, you know? Like, like, really intense bullying and, like, really insane shit that people were doing. Uh, and I was, like, thinking, like, man, in hi my high school, that, like, there were fights, but there was nothing, like, crazy like that. Like, that's insane. Like, literally stuffing kids in lockers, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, doing like some mean, pure evil, pure evil stuff to these, to like the nerdy kids, right? I feel like that just doesn't really happen anymore. And I think it's because of video games. <laughs> Boys just started like they discovered video games at some point and then just stopped bullying. One great advice you got from your teacher, if you have an idea, try it, don't imagine it. That's true, like you can, I've, I've done this before myself where I spend more time thinking about doing it, but not actually doing it. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that wouldn't be great if I could do this thing. And I'm just sitting there, not doing it, just thinking about, oh, wouldn't that be great? And one day I was just like, I need to stop doing that. If I got an idea, I just put it down. I just had to find a way to put down my idea quickly. And this process I'm doing here is kind of my main process for quick sketching, putting an idea down quickly. Some of the older artists that you know work harder. Well, that that should be inspiration, you know. I guess like when you're a certain age, and you 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 have more friends, and you know you're going out a lot more. Like I can understand. I mean, I did that. I had my time when I did that. Now I'm like a now I'm just like a boring old man. I don't like go out to bars like I used to. I'm I'm married. So it's like, what the hell else am I gonna do? <laughs> Might as well just like sit around and make art all day, you know, or or just hang out with the uh, the wife and the dog, you know. <laughs> it's like that's it, that's my life. But it's pretty great because I'm 
I'm kind of an introvert anyways. I kind of like to be home, so... Being an artist, being a concept artist, and working in this industry kind of works well with my natural behavior, I guess. Not sure what's going on here, but eh, I'll just kind of blur it out for now. It's not important. I'm wondering about the sky, though. I'm wondering if it's not quite right. If I should probably simplify, simplify, or you know, you know, really, really dumb it down. Because I just feel like those. Every time I try to do like these billowy graphic clouds, like NCYS style clouds, it just like I get myself into trouble because it starts distracting. And now there's people whispering at me. Yeah, I just get distracted and then, you know, I put something down that's a little too much. Never been able to pull off the Wyeth clouds. draw a lot with what friends yeah that's right if you draw a lot yeah you don't have any friends <laughs> you guys are my only friends how about that the temptation to put some bird hacks in here is pretty strong right now. Sean, you're saying nowadays you, you just people just verbally insult you. No, where where all that all that bullying came, or where, where all it went is, you know, kids that play online games like Overwatch. That's where they went. Now they just say like the the mo the worst like racial, racist, evil shit in your ear. That's where those kids went. It's like, whoa, I remember when I was first on the internet. I felt like I could say whatever the hell I wanted. It's like the old days in the internet. It's like, you're like, oh, so I can say whatever I want to whoever I want and have total anonymity? That sounds great. Anonymity is a myth on games. I don't know. I reported people on Overwatch before many times. I don't see the result of that.
It's funny because technically I still I, I work with the same company as as uh, Blizzard, and I work with Activision. <laughs> I'm not it. I don't work at Blizzard, but. All the good artists I know see play Overwatch. A lot of people play Overwatch. I don't think it's like just the good artists or whatever. I think I think a lot of people play Overwatch. Because a lot of people are familiar with the idea of a shooter. You know, um, like, like say MOBAs. MOBAs kind of just totally got lost on me. I've tried several times to play a MOBA, but I just, I just can't get into it. But a shooter, you know, I get that. That makes sense. That's easy. That's easy to get into. Plus, the the art is so good in that game. You know, that's probably why artists like it because the art is so good. And it's fun. I mean, you could play it competitively and seriously, or you could just like have fun and just screw around in it. It doesn't demand um, like a competitive spirit. Because you can just play like arcade or uh, quick plays and stuff. So. I don't know. That's my theory. Anyways. You have a friend. If if you men mention Hanzo, she'll freak out. Uh, I play Hanzo. <laughs> I, mean, I play like most all characters. Pretty much all of them, almost. People get very angry when you play Hanzo. <laughs> I found that out. Like what? I'm actually good. <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. I'm not that good. I actually kind of suck. <laughs> All right. Let me see my reference. Okay, I still haven't really figured out the foreground. I better do that before I move on. Um. Let's see, what kind of colors am I using here? Going warm with everything. Yeah, I should have probably put the foreground in there. I was getting distracted. I'm gonna focus on darkest shadows in the foreground. I 
probably need to give that pillar a little bit more support. There's no way that thing would stand up with like that much broken off. What time am I at? Oh, okay. Not too bad. Alright, not too bad at all. Are those windmills? No. You need to be on your computer. Your phone is too small of a screen. You can't tell what's going on. <laughs> Not windmills. Just like broken ruins. I don't know. Don't ask me, alright? I just put shit down. I put shapes down that feel okay and then and then later I just sort of figure out what it is. Top of this pillar, we're gonna get a little bit cooler. It's gonna cool down a little bit. So cool that down. All right, check. Did that. I think overall should be a little darker. Or maybe the background should be a little lighter. Yeah, it's hard to say because I don't really have a whole lot of light in my middle ground and foreground. All the light I want focused right on that focal point. Hence the name Focal Focus. <laughs> You're eating dinner. You eating your spam? Oh, Chris, I didn't see you. Hello. How you doing, Chris? Does Activision require more realism in the art style or more stylized? Uh, well, I work on Destiny, so it's kind of... They don't require, I don't know if it requires. I guess like with Destiny is a bit more on the realistic side, I guess you could say. Sorta. All right. I wonder if a little bit of warmth can hit that too much? Maybe. I don't like that.
Ahi burrito. Yeah, I'm gonna be in Hawaii pretty soon, actually. Not too long from now. You gotta tell me uh, what I should do while I'm in Kauai. called Bear Day. Snorkel Boat Tour. Alright. Ah, yes, that Wednesday when I am away, I cannot stream. Um, I, I, maybe I'll do like a an IRL stream. <laughs> Is it so, the uh, Hawaii is on Pacific time zone, right? So it's not like not like there's much of a time difference, anyways, right? That's probably a dumb question. It's probably Pacific, right? It's on the Pacific, right? Come on. You just <laughs> everyone says that to the person behind me. So if I wave, you can see. It's just a mirror. I'm not in like some like art streaming factory where there's like hundreds of us. That would be pretty funny though. See ya, Sean. Have a good night. All right, guys, what am I doing? I think I should add a little bit more cooler temperatures here in the foreground.
It's three hours earlier in Hawaii? Oh, okay. So, it has its own time zone? See, I didn't even know that. Because it's pretty far west uh, of here. So, I guess that makes sense. You gotta deal with me. I don't know much about Hawaii. I think I, I think I talked about this last time. Last time we were talking about Hawaii. I was like, I, I really don't know anything about Hawaii. So you gotta have to dumb it down for me. The most that I know about Hawaii is what I learned from Moana. That's a good movie. Is, is Moana like a, a faithful... Is it like a faithful telling? Or not telling, but representation of Hawaiian culture? Or is it like a... You know... Almost offensive in its portrayal? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I like that movie a lot. Not bad, but they did something weird with the fire goddess. You were hoping she would be the princess? Oh, so it is true. They turn into... All Hawaiians turn into manta rays when they die. I, But I think that depends on what your... Your spirit animal is, right? Because her grandmother... I don't think they all turn into manta rays. I think her grandmother just did, because that was... That was her, like, her spirit animal. That new Pixar animation looks really good, though. Coco? I just saw the trailer for that. It looks really good. Maybe a little close to Book of Life, which I really liked. Um, well, I mean, it was... Book of Life was pretty good. I, I, would, I wasn't crazy about it, but... It was visually really kind of cool. So. There's a dog in the in the Coco movie, and I'm just like, that dog better not die. That's all I gotta say. I don't even I don't even care if the dog like comes dies and then comes back. I don't care. It just dog the dog better not die. 
I hate that. It's so manipulative. Don't mess with the dog. Hey, what sh short key keys are you using to flip horizontally? I reconfigured my shortcuts so that F1 and F2 are flip horizontal and vertical. You can do that yourself. It's pretty easy. Do I have a FAQ anywhere? Uh, FAQ? Nope. I am the FAQ. <laughs> like you want to know like the like what kind of tablet and stuff I'm using? I never set that up. I should totally set that up on Twitch because that's a better. I could just put it on the a link on the page somewhere. My dream is just to only stream on Twitch in the future. And when I have that all set up, oh, it'll be it'll be glorious. But I got too many homies on that YouTube, so I got to I got to keep them uh, keep them happy. But definitely want Definitely want that Twitch stream going. Uh, probably just maybe this weekend. I keep saying this and I never do it because I get busy. But maybe, maybe, maybe this weekend. Twitch only stream. If I do it, just keep an eye on the Discord and I will. I will announce. I will announce on there. Because I want to do some. Uh, painting process record recording and just while I'm recording I might as well stream it at least that's the plan if I'm not like super busy like I've been are any of you guys gonna go to CTN Switch your mind at all if you ask questions about painting environments? No, go ahead. You can ask. You can ask the questions. It doesn't hurt to ask. But I do get distracted and start talking about other things. You're going as a school field trip. That's, that's quite a field trip there. Uh, yeah, you, you all should go to CTN. It's a wonderful thing. Because I will be there. I'll have a table there. My wife will be there meet her. She's awesome. I don't like this. Gotta do something about this.
You super suggest the Verde Burrito place. Yeah, sketchy, definitely. Come by, say hello. Do you start with color? Um, already in your mind? Uh, no. Uh, I start with the black and white and sort of the design, the general composition. Because while I'm streaming, I can't think of two different things at once, so... <laughs> I try to make the process as simple as possible, so I only think about one thing at a time. Big question, Tokyo. They don't really distract me too much, so I'll ask, uh, possibly brief. Um, list three most important aspects of learning to paint environments. Uh, you're assuming a lot of master studies. Um, master studies are a good thing to do, uh, but I always try to tell people if you're going to do a study of any kind, make sure you have like a goal or a task in mind. What is the thing you want to learn from that? Focus on that specifically. If it's, uh, I want to just learn about sort of the graphic composition, then paint it with like a hard brush or just paint out uh, shapes with the lasso tool. You know, I said at the top of the stream it was like, a good thing to keep in mind while you're painting digitally, or you know, especially painting environments, is to try to limit yourself in some way. Like me, I was only thinking about value at first, and not, then I thought about color, and then I thought about texture, and then I thought about light. You know, it's like try to break the process down in, a, in, in little bite-sized chunks to make it easier on yourself, because you know, environment has got a lot of stuff going on. And you can't do it all at once. You can't paint it all at once. It's impossible to do that. So build the painting one, one, one aspect, one part at a time. You know, make it easier on yourself. Don't make it hard on yourself. I see people doing that all the time, making it so much harder on themselves. Uh, for environments, painting outside, or just being very observant while you're outside. Look up, look at how color behaves in the natural landscape. That's really big. How color and light behaves out in the world is, is a huge thing to understand. And to keep your environments very, very simple. Start off with some very, very basic graphic shapes. No two shapes are the same size. The shapes are not evenly spaced between them. 
There's always a dominant and a subdominant and accident. There's never two shapes the same. And, uh, you know, environment painting, a good environment painting always starts with a, it's the first problem is a graphic design problem. So it always starts with graphic design. Go, die. I hate that. Well, it's not working. And use reference when you're painting environments. That's three, I think. Or four. <laughs> periodically look at and I go, oh, I like that lighting, I'm going to just take that. Or something similar to that. Uh, this is probably a middle ground thing. I like these little details. I'm going to try to add more without overdoing it. No problem, Tokyo. Yeah, you're always confused where to start. Yeah, just start with the simple, simple graphic shapes. Start black and white. You know, don't even think about color. Harassing me is a good start. <laughs> yep. How's that? How's that working out? Zen, harassing me. Is it working out all right? Let's add a. Let's add a duder in here. Stickman. I mean, what? What else are you gonna do? Your dad likes my painting. Oh, thank you.
I don't know. Maybe maybe a dude with a on a horse maybe is better. Something like that. I just don't like painting horses without ref. What's a horse look like? I don't know. I don't remember. Tiny head horse. You know what the hardest thing to draw is? A horse with hands riding a bike. horse with human hands riding a bicycle. Literally the hardest thing to draw. I think I'm drawing a donkey. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let's go back to the guy standing. Ah, I don't know. I can figure it out, right? Oops. Fami, no problem. Animals drinking again? Should he be? Drinking some water. Horses are generally pretty big, so I made it. Made the horse too small. Why not both? All right. So there's a guy leading the horse, maybe? It's just a whole caravan now. Why doesn't that guy have a horse? Is, does he have to walk? That sucks. And maybe there's like another guy that's like farther ahead. A little mini guy next to him. Uh, oops. He's like over the hill a little bit.
Stick man just got his stick on the back. Guys, I don't know what a horse looks like. So don't don't criticize my horse. Taste the rainbow, paint the rainbow. You say and put a rainbow in this image? I had a thing where I would sneak rainbows into concepts. I did that for a while. That was fun. The Art Flower, hello, long time no see. How you been? I am doing great, by the way. I don't know about the rest of these people. They're quiet today. They're all they're all busy painting, I bet. Working.
You're almost asleep. <laughs> I was really, really tired when I started streaming. Like I probably could have just went to sleep. But now that I'm like painting this thing and really getting into it, it's keeping me awake. It's giving me energy. Like, I could literally just stay up really, really late painting. Does that make me really, does that make me lame? Or is that cool? I mean, I used to do that when I was in college and stuff. I would just do all-nighters. Oh, that was also partially because I was sometimes doing freelance work while I was in school. Ooh, bad idea. But I learned a lot. Yeah, this stream has the awesome power of putting people to sleep. If only I could like turn this stream into an ASMR stream, where I whisper very softly as you all drift to sleep. What's your perspective on doing 40 plus thumbnail sketches? Does sketching a lot help you? 40 is quite a lot. Um, I mean, it kind of depends if you're working for somebody. I remember doing, you know, I used to do several thumbnails whenever I worked on something. But I think as I've been doing this longer, I learned that doing a lot of thumbnails is sometimes not very good. It depends on your relationship with your client or who you're working for. Uh, if you're doing like some sort of personal project or some sort of personal work and 40 thumbnails is is going to help you develop something, then then by all means do that. But if I'm just concepting anywhere like a, anything between a prop or an environment, um, I try to thumbnail a good range, like a, a kind of a, a wide range with within a certain limit. Like I'm not going to thumbnail everything under the sun, every idea that pops into my mind, usually there's some sort of prompt that limits you in some ways, because there's a particular thing they're looking for, a particular thing you're looking for, so there's... If you start doing too many thumbnails, they'll start looking the same, and you don't want to repeat the same idea, because then it just looks like busy noise on a sheet when you're presenting stuff, so you, you want to... Uh, Consolidate your ideas to the best, and and each of them unique in their own way, and each of them answer different questions. Uh, 
Yeah, generally five good ideas, sure. Um, if I'm gonna do like ten ideas for like a prop, they're gonna be they're gonna be very um, very rough, very loose, basically just silhouettes. I don't want to invest a whole lot of time in something that'll eventually be thrown away. Just want to get the basic idea down first, and then when they've picked something and they then you can elaborate, do a couple more variations that have color. And, you know, you don't want to make more work for yourself. You know, being a good concept artist is also learning how to be efficient. wrote a bot for the Discord. Did you really? What does the bot do? Dracon I Draconic Meh Thank you for the follow. Jeremy, have you done Inktober this year? No. Busy life things. If I ever do Inktober, it's like gonna be one or two days. That's sort of my track record. It's not that I, I mean, I don't really, I don't know, I don't really sketch in my sketchbook as much as I used to. really as much as I should. Uh, if I do sketch, it's usually when I'm outside and I'm sketching from, you know, just looking at stuff outside. People or buildings, light, light patterns and shit like that. <laughs> or little um, uh, thumbnail ideas. Very rough, very loose. I never really sketch in my sketchbook for the sake of like sketching a pretty thing 
it's usually pretty rough and and when I do sketch though it's usually always in ink uh, I, I never really draw with pencil anymore it's just uh, brush pens and felt tip markers and you know felt tip pens so it's kind of what I like I'm more interested in like painting graphic shape drawing graphic shape. Dracon, that's awesome. Yeah, so you're doing um, you're doing Inktober, and you're also improving. That's awesome. I think really that's what it's all about. It's not about like you know sticking to topics and stuff like that, or it's not about posting and getting likes. Right? It's about improving, forcing people to uh, use a medium they probably don't use that often, getting away from the computer. I think that's what sort of what it's really about. Be cool to get a nice webcam in here and then for stream I could do some traditional painting. I just need a, a nice webcam. I need to rearrange my setup a little bit. But I would totally do that. Wouldn't mind doing some wash and watercolor paintings. Do you listen to music that fits the theme of your painting? Sometimes. Looks like the Old West. Yeah. Yeah, one of these days I'll do um, I'll do some traditional painting in here. I'd like to. That's the plan at least. But I'm like so crazy busy, and then it's and then it's like. Wednesday all of a sudden and I'm like oh shit it's Wednesday all right I guess I'll stream <laughs> that's kind of how my week goes so I, I've been pretty proud of myself that I was able to stay this consistent with the stream this long because I really didn't think I was going to yeah it's partially just because like you, you guys always turn out which is awesome Yeah, to paint something like this would, would definitely take a long time. I'm not that good at you know, painting traditionally to, to do this. That's sort of the benefit of digital. Plus, like, it just looks nice on your screen already because it's that's how I'm seeing it. You know, that's how digital is presented. It's presented digitally, so it makes sense.
Glad you keep on streaming. Yeah, thanks for sticking with it too. I'll keep doing it as long as I can. It's good because it's kind of, you know, it's forcing me to do a little bit of personal week, personal work at least once a week. Thanks, Jasper. You ever use 3D modeling to speed up workflow? Yeah. I, uh, most of the work I do for my work work is painted over a 3D model of some sort. Um, either like it's a block mesh that somebody made or it's a it's a rough block out that I made um, it's not a hundred percent of the time I would say it's about fifty percent of the time uh, I just don't want to sit here and mess around with 3d I you know I, I've talked about this many times before on the stream it's just like I want to learn how to better paint everything out instead of using photos or 3D. I could totally do that. I do that all the time. <laughs> but my personal interest is I just want to learn how to like paint that better. And that way I don't you know, maybe one day my uh, my just images that I just painted are are going to look just as realistic, just as interesting just as dynamic texturally and everything else as the work um, that I do using photos in 3D. I feel like the 3D bit I'm not really gaining a whole lot from because I feel like I can just work it out in a drawing just as well but there are some certain happy accidents and certain things you can make in 3D that, that you just wouldn't have thought of with your own hand. Um, and a big reason why I use 3D at work is because I'm following some sort of block out in the level or whatever, so. And I gotta stay within that footprint. Photos are just a really good, really easy way to like put in some texture, or add in some information that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to paint or think of in a short amount of time. Very, very much speeds up the workflow.
see about this background here. I had my NCYF cloud, but that wasn't working. Why is the top of the mountain dark? Is it a cloud? Yeah, um, clouds occluding the light a little bit at the top. It always makes things look more massive if it's not lit evenly all the way around. It's like partially covered by the clouds or, or whatever. Um, I kind of just do that by default and then later on I figure out why that's happening specifically. Um, I just do it because it looks cool and then later I figure out sort of the physics of why that's happening. Insane! Thank you so much for the follow. Very much appreciate it. insane thank you so much thanks for dropping in Thank you. 
does SoCal look like that? <laughs> uh, uh, no. Definitely not where I'm at. There's a lot more trees where I'm at. <laughs> Out in the desert. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think Utah has the, the prettiest desert in this country. The pre prettiest deserts with lots of interesting rocks like this. So I'd say maybe more Utah or possibly Arizona. Not, not even like, you know, not using 3D or not using photos because I want to challenge myself with just painting. But sometimes not even using different blending modes, you know, like dodge and overlay. I just, I want to get it right the first time. I'm not saying that I'll, I never use it if I'm painting like my own thing at home, but definitely resort to using those sort of things but I I want to try to get the right color at the start right color right value and not mess around too much with little tricks and stuff just paint it right the first time you know that's my challenge that's a challenge to myself so that I try to uphold Except birds. I fuck birds. I'm not gonna paint birds. Birds suck. Speaking of birds, I should put some in here. Something about these dudes and not sitting right. I'm sorry. They're just not sitting right with me. Maybe it's just too much. Maybe I'll just go back to the one dude. I think simpler is better. I've got all these different, all these different details, all the ruins. It's just getting too noisy in an area that should probably be um, pretty economical. Monument Valley, yeah, Monument Valley is awesome. Thoughts on the new Photoshop update? I don't know what's in the new Photoshop update. <laughs> I don't pay attention to that, honestly. Is there something controversial I should know about? Because so far I've been using it and I haven't really noticed any changes.
got to start wrapping this thing up. It's getting to be that time already. Got him on the table. <laughs> He's like, what's going on? Do you ever use content aware fill in your paintings? Yeah, I actually have. Uh, that's something I'll use like with photos. Uh, I really try to make that photo work exactly the way I want it to. The photo's not long enough. If there's a section of, a, of the photo that I like, but the rest I don't, I'll just content aware fill the part that I like all over the place so that I get that texture spread around. Um, yeah, I use content aware fill a lot, actually. <laughs> I love it. Let's add some fog and cloud and smoke dust just to help with this composition a little bit Give that dude a pole or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could do that. He is stick man after all.
They added brush smoothing, like Lazy and Izumi. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and did they add a symmetrical brush tool? I wanted that for a long time. Ugh, they've needed that for a long, long time. Where you could paint like symmetrical designs. Oh, that would save me so much time. <laughs> I don't know how many like concepts that need to be symmetrical, like silhouettes that are symmetrical, and I had to like select it, copy it, flip it, merge it, you know, just like God. I used to use that program called Alchemy sometimes to do silhouette sketches. That was forever ago. And yeah, Photoshop still never had a symmetrical brush, a symmetry brush kind of function. to wrap this up just a minute <laughs> yeah good old-fashioned good old-fashioned environment painting, something I have not done on this stream for a good long time. Sketchy, thank you so much. I do want to add back a little bit to this. Oh, if somebody knows how to do this uh, symmetrical brush, if they added that in there, please tell me. I don't, I didn't know about that. Or I could look it up, I guess.
<laughs> is that an Assassin's Creed guy? Well, it makes sense because I was just listening to Assassin's Creed uh, soundtrack, so maybe that got planted in my head somewhere. Subconsciously. You don't know if you'll be here next time? Mm. I'll wait till it's production ready to use the symmetry. Look it up. I'll figure it out. But thank you. So next week probably won't be feedback.
Okay. Alright. Birds! Lots of freaking birds. Evacuary, hello. Maybe something like that. It's not so bad. Alrighty. Yeah, Mochi's still an old man. I would pick him up, but he... She just took him on a walk. Yep, he's my old man, for sure.
All right. I keep saying all right, like I'm going to finish this thing. Yeah, if I don't know what to do, I just kind of like fuzz it out. <laughs> Oh, she's a, a mopey teenager. Yeah. He's just angsty. Alrighty, guys. A good old fashioned landscape for this week. Let's look at the Discord. Am I still connected to you guys on YouTube? It says YouTube is disconnected. Oh, it reconnected. There it is. Just let me know. Just let me know if anything funny happens. A lot of people entered this. Okay, our challenge. Let's see. Let me pull it up over here. Let's take a look. Artbot. Is that what you sp spent all night doing? Art challenged. Okay, so... Wow, we have all these categories now. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, the topic is legendary creatures. This one is from uh, Sarayan, and it's a little animation. That's awesome. This reminds me of uh, Cuphead. That's what I'm playing right now. Getting through Cuphead. So that's that's cool. It's freaking awesome. Lynn is actually my wife is actually a really good animator. She did um, a lot of like old school paper animation stuff, and she taught a class at. And, at the art school that I taught at, which is like old school light box paper animation. Um, the other thing I would say is like maybe just a few more frames of animation when he's breathing in right before he exhales. Just a few more frames of animation there to really show that tension. It's great. It's nice. What's the topic again? Legendary creatures. Not exactly a legendary creature, but a pretty nice portrait. Some small things. Maybe the lips could be shifted to the left just slightly. We are looking dead center. Portraits are always a little better when the face is not directly straight on, but a little bit cock to the side or to the left or right um, it actually is easier to define proportions um, that way you kind of understand the volume of the face another small thing maybe ears need to be lower just a little bit um, I can tell because if the ears were that high up that means the head would be looking down and you would not be able to see the underside of the nose the nose would be you'd only see the top side of the nose so that's it. But otherwise, nicely painted. All right. Primordial. This is from Jorik. Damn, that's epic. <laughs> He's about to fuck up that city. <laughs> To really, to really sell this perspective, because uh, right now we're looking at this dome. It looks like we're almost looking at it dead on, but our horizon line is really, really low. So what you 
need to remember is that as we're looking up at really giant things that that the uh, perspective is going to shift and we're going to see more of the underside of this dome. So it's going to actually be more like, you know, the underside of this dome and a lot of the chest slot proportions are actually going to, we're going to see the underside of it. So it'll, you know, it'll kind of follow along this sort of arch. And the more dramatic we make that foreshortening and perspective, the more the large, more large this thing is going to feel. It's going to feel super epic and huge, and and uh, and yeah, but yeah, really cool stuff. Um, Keno Seven. It's got a really colorful blast of fire. Wow, your colors are really extreme. I feel like I'm on an acid trip looking at this. Um, maybe pull back on the colors a little bit. And, uh, and when you're painting fire, what's important to remember is that you're going to make the fire look more intense and, and, more, um, and more bright. If you add some darker values in here that kind of describe either the shape of the mouth or also the, the flames themselves. You know, look at some reference of fire. Um, and and at, you probably need some darker values. Everything is just shooting right to white, like you color dodged. Um, you went color dodge crazy all over it. But uh, very interesting. Indeed. This one is from Zeb. It's a griffin. cool I like it got an epic wizard here taming the griffin are these like uh, eggs or something around around him right here it's hard to tell you know when you're painting a creature um, I would always try to look for an animal that it that best represents its form so you have like a quadruped so you know maybe looking at um, a dog or looking at a cat and seeing how they stand sort of how their anatomy is and try to find something that sort of represents what you're going for and, and use that as your reference um, to get that anatomy feeling right because I feel like the shoulder should come down quite a bit more probably to here and then have a much more broader chest that tucks in really neatly around the belly um, yeah, and the perspective on the wings should probably, like this wing is pretty good. We're seeing the underside of it is a lot of foreshortening, but the other wing should probably continue in the very same way on the other side and even tuck backwards, not necessarily up and out, but backwards because wings usually tuck more inwards as they, as they reach out. Pus Puskas her. That's horrifying. It's like a, uh, it's like Monkey King, really creepy Monkey King. You know this, the fur, uh, the the hair that kind of goes from beard to to the head. Uh, it's right now it's all kind of the same value it'd be nice if like the top of the hair was getting catching a little bit more light has some reflection and then as you get to the side of the head it's much more darker because they're not going to be lit exactly the same because it is a rounder volume and there may be an ear or something to break up that hair petro storm cool very intense yeah, we create a little bit more separation between your your foreground character, overall much darker, and then lighten up everything behind. Because there's a lot of fire and smoke and lava, and all that stuff's going to create smoke and atmosphere that's going to really create separation between your foreground character and, and your creature here. And 
again, and it'll just make it feel more massive and epic and raise the stakes. Evacory. Hey, this reminds me of something. It's like Game of Thrones. The Ice Dragons. I'm having a hard time understanding what's going on. So we have a part of the wall that kind of goes up this way. Is the dragon bursting through part of the wall? Or... I don't know, it's hard to tell. What I would do is I would just eliminate this. Um, widen up this opening a little bit. That way this the dragon coming through has more room to breathe and you can really clearly see its silhouette and you can clearly see that it's coming through the wall. Um, I would maybe even move it down just a bit just so it's more a little bit more on the third the top of the image but otherwise really cool piece. Okay, just two more. All right. This one's from Orikpio. Orikpio. Very purple wizard lady. Is she summoning a creature or is she turning into a creature? That's the question. Very cool. Uh, we would think about the lighting on how the light of the wings are going to reflect down onto this. Because um, essentially what you have is a cone shape that is made out of this very long skirt. Um, and here it's lit very evenly. There's probably a core shadow. So I would darken up this middle area and allow the lighter reflected areas sit around the sides. Very neat. Very iconic. Whole thing. Sean paints summoning raw. Another thing that reminds me of Monkey King. It's like having a little seance. I think this pose could be a little bit more intense. I'm having a hard time understanding how he's summoning. He's just kind of like rocking out on his knees in his bedroom, you know, um, some rocker dude. Um, but this feels really cool. It's like a, it's got a nice style. I think what would be cool is if if you add a little bit more at the top, allowing this vignette of the of Ra, I'm assuming, to uh, ha have some room to to breathe, and that silhouette to really read really strong. Um, as far as like a uh, a favorite here, like. Guys, I swear if this animation was just a little bit more to it, I would have went for that. This one is not doesn't quite fit the topic. This one's pretty pretty big contender, in my opinion. Um, there's some neat stuff here. You all did a pretty good job. Thank you all for participating. This one is pretty pretty nice as well. Uh, I feel like. But it's Game of Thrones, come on. You know, we all know that. This one's really interesting, too. But Sean Paints wins every time, so... <laughs> well, he hasn't won in a while, but I, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, he wins every time. I'm gonna go for this one. This one's pretty cool. Uh, from, from Jorik. Is it? Okay, that's two different people. So, congratulations, Jorik. That's pretty cool. I like the way you handled the city. A lot of suggested information. Pretty neat. Probably don't even need this little dragon trying to fight back. But yeah, pretty cool. It's like War of the Worlds. Anyways, good job, Jork. And thank you all for joining in. I'll see you all next week. Do another composition. See y'all later. <laughs> Bye.